talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can see through the facade like an what's going on fight fans it's another great day when you love mma welcome back to mad maddie fight talk so we gotta we gotta go over this it's the post fight analysis of the jake paul versus nate diaz boxing match we can't just let this one slide jake paul making huge waves got the unanimous decision victory over nate diaz all three judges gave it to jake paul two of them had it uh 98 91 one of them had it 97 92 and I think that was a good call. It was a good decision uh, by the refs. I think he, uh, Jake definitely did enough to win the fight. I thought that Jake would crumble under the pressure of Nate Diaz's aggressive style. Nate's in your face. He doesn't get tired. He can eat big punches. You know, he's not the most explosive guy in the world, but he throws heavy volume. And he probably does crack a little bit. You know, he probably does hit a little bit hard. But I was surprised, man. Jake fought very well off of his back foot. He did everything he needed to do to win that fight. Now, what kind of pissed me off a little bit was almost every single round Nate was kind of just giving up the first like 30 seconds a minute he would come in with his guard real high and just get in his face and just let Jake start teeing off on him I didn't really like that you know Jake was throwing a lot he did de he definitely was ready to go to a decision if he needed to he fought the way a boxer would fight I mean Nate probably wanted to get in there and do boxing he's probably been boxing his entire career he's been in the MMA for a long time he's like 37 38 years old so this is probably a dream for Nate to get in a boxing ring and, you know, live out his dream. And you can't blame the guy. He's gave us wars and great fights throughout his entire career. So, you know, hats off to him. I mean, they sold out, you know, uh, the American Airlines Arena, wherever they were at, somewhere in Dallas, Texas. They they sold out the arena. It was huge. It was packed. Big time Nate Diaz fans, big time Jake Paul fans. You know, they put on a hell of a show. But at the end of the day, man, you know, fighting's fighting. You said it yourself, Nate. You're a real fighter. You're a dog. I don't want to see the showboating bullshit, you know, when you're it's on the line. You know, you're talking all this shit, and maybe it's to sell a fight that you're gonna go in there and you're gonna whoop this guy's ass and you're gonna show him what a real fighter is. And Nate does do that, man. I mean, he was in there and he was throwing combos. He was definitely doing some dirty uh, clinch boxing, but but he was showboating too much. He was giving moments away where I feel like if he would have just been a little bit more serious and threw his jab and threw combos to start with. I don't know how tired he was, granted, because he is a lot older than Jake is. But if you wouldn't have gave Jake so much of every round and did what he was doing towards the end of these rounds, I think it was like, what, seven, six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, nine. Those those rounds were the ones where Nate was starting to get off. If he would have did that from the beginning of these rounds and didn't let Jake, you know, do so much and didn't play possum so much, because in the judge's mind, it looks like you're hurt. I don't even think Nate gave a fuck whether he won or lost this fight, to be completely honest. I think Nate just wanted to go in there and fight. He's a fighter. He just likes to fight. Jake wanted to win this fight. Jake ended up landing a nasty uh, lead overhand, caught Nate on the temple coming in and dropped him to the canvas. Very impressive. I mean, he's literally dropped almost everybody he's fought now. So not surprisingly, Nate gets back up and continues to fight his ass off. I mean, it was a fun fight to watch. It was definitely a learning experience for Jake, probably more than it was for Nate. So, I mean, Jake's going to carry this on to the next fight. I mean, the dude is a freaking monster in there. He's a real fighter. He fought to a split decision loss against Tommy Fury, who is an actual professional boxer. That is his career. And we're not talking, Jake's a YouTuber turn boxer, but now he, he's the real deal. He's a real fighter. He's beat guys like Anderson Silva. Look at the resume this guy has. Beat Anderson Silva, beat uh, Tyron Woodley, face plant, knocked him out. Beat Tyron twice, actually. Knocked out Ben Askren. I mean, Nate Robinson, that's a given. But, dude, he's beaten world-class, world champion athletes. I mean, it's insane to me. Like, all MMA legends, of course, did lose to Ty, uh, to Tommy Fury. I would like to see him run that back. I don't know that what, what's in the future for this guy. I don't know if he's looking to continue to box. Because from what I saw in the post-fight uh, press conferences, this is why I do the video so late, by the way. I want to listen to what these guys have to say after the fight, kind of see the path and direction they're thinking about. It sounds like Jake is ready to go to the PFL he wants to fight Nate Diaz real bad in MMA, which I think is pretty surprising because Nate has a way crazier set of tools in the MMA world. I think that's definitely his realm. He should stick to that. But Jake would probably do very well in MMA. The dude hits like a fucking train, has really good wrestling from what I hear. Him and his brother Logan, they're actually really good wrestlers. The jiu-jitsu thing, uh, that might cause some problems. Uh, kicks probably could cause some problems, but Jake could probably crack if you learn how to kick properly himself. I mean, the dude's a big, big guy, big, athletic, strong, explosive. He's going to bring problems to MMA, dude. I mean, 
I want to see how he handles getting punched with four ounce gloves, but that dude's got a solid head. So he might, he might fare very well. I think he's going to bring a lot of problems to the MMA world after he's already been knocking these dudes out with boxing gloves. I can only imagine what, what's going to happen when he cracks somebody's chin with four ounce gloves. Nate, on the other hand, I don't know if he's going to take the uh, Jake Paul fight in MMA. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, if he did do that. I mean, both of the floodgates have completely opened. We've learned a few things. One, Nate's not washed up. The guy can still fight. He's a dog. He's got an iron chin. He always makes it entertaining. So we know that about him. He's not done. He has a lot left in the tank. Jake, on the other hand, there's a lot of options for this guy. Does he want to fight KSI? That's a big money fight. Does he want to fight Tommy Fury to prove that he can beat a boxer? Does he want to fight Conor McGregor? Because now that's an option as well. I mean, I'm sure Conor's pissed that Nate, Nate Diaz lost and wants to probably get in there. Because out of all MMA fighters, realistically, I would say Nate and Conor probably have the best boxing out of all these guys. And Conor probably hits harder than Nate does. So that would be an interesting fight. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what the f uh, future holds? But I would like to see Jake Paul get into MMA. If he is going to box, I would like to see him box Conor McGregor. Out of all people, that I think that would be great. Two guys juiced up on steroids. It would just be phenomenal. Huge money would be on the line for that. That would be insane. The shit talking back and forth would be out of this world. It would be super entertaining. I, and, and let's be real here, man. Jake's an entertainer at the end of the day. He, he gets paid a lot to set up these fucking, you know, what, what do you want to call them? Spectacle fights where it's like you got all of these. I'm an MMA guy. I love MMA. But we're fucking stupid. Like, let's be real. We're, he baits every single one of these guys to get into the boxing ring. I don't get it. It's like, dude, you guys are not boxing specialists. You guys are MMA fighters, mixed martial arts. You guys do it all, and you're good at it. Bring this motherfucker to the MMA cage, and then we'll see it. If he starts knocking you guys out in that, Jake Paul is just the truth, to be completely honest. If Jake goes into the PFL and knocks out, you know, if he knocks out his first guy, I'm going to start looking at this dude like, man, we highly underestimated him. I already He has already earned my respect with the Anderson Silva win. And then when he fought Fury, I was like, God dang, this motherfucker really is a good fighter. And if he goes into PFL or even the UFC or who knows what's going to happen next, he's and knocks somebody out, dude, it's over with. The guy's the truth. I mean, you might as well just give this guy a title shot, to be completely honest. If he's your champion, he's bringing all eyes to the fight. But anyway, I was entertained. I thought it was a fun fight to watch. I was actually very impressed with how Jake fought. He was fighting great counter-striking, great uh, fighting off his back foot, using his jab, creating angles. He did a great job. Nate did a great job, too. He should have just put it on him more and been a little bit more focused. But at the end of the day, that was a very entertaining fight. So uh, hit me in the comments, guys. Let me know what you guys think Jake Paul should do next. Should he rematch uh, Nate Diaz in MMA? Should he take on somebody else? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Haters talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club dripping like I'm fresh paint. I could see through the facade like an